Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the one-handed mechanic, if I can do it, you can too. Today we have here a Craftsman 15 and a half horsepower overhead Briggs and Stratton engine. And if you've ever gone out to your garage or shed and you smell a whole bunch of fuel, and then you go and check your oil, and your whole dipstick is just loaded with oil all the way up past the bar graph and everything. Now, on this video, I had to drain it because it was leaking everywhere, but if you ever come across your oil level, one, if you smell the dipstick and it smells like gasoline, you know you have an issue and it's a carburetor issue. If you see a line way up here when you, you know, wipe it off and dip and put it back in and screw it in and check it, then you, you have an issue. If you come across it, you knew you put gas in it the day before and the gas tank is empty, you know you have a carburetor issue. All right, so the first thing you have to do is you want to drain this. Now, I have drained most of this out to almost to the point where there's nothing in it. Okay, so tools we need for this one is from left to right. We're gonna do the electric ratchet that I always use, a, uh, a half inch wrench that I grounded down to make it thin to get the fuel shut off sunlight off. We have a fuel line crimp tool, which will crimp the tool I get that from Harbor Freight. 716 socket, 516 socket, quarter inch socket. They're all deep. 716 wrench. Uh, quarter inch, um, I just have a little extension that I will use, quarter inch ratchet, 3 eighths ratchet, a couple of different screwdrivers to clean with. This is a um, piston stop, it's plastic, and I'm going to use this to put the seat back in. You, if you have an 8.716 socket, you can use that to take the drain plug out. This machine has a square drain plug and that's what I use that for. All these pliers, which is needle nose, regular pliers, and channel lock device grips. And then this is the fastener tool remover that I love. I use this for taking the fuel lines off the fuel filters. We're going to put a new fuel filter on. We're going to need one new clamp. Uh, these, this is basically a 7 16 and a quarter inch nut driver that I use. It just makes it easier sometimes to use the handheld. And then a hammer. Now, the I don't have all the parts here. We're missing one gasket, but this is the float bowl gasket. This is the inlet seat for this particular engine. And this is the needle valve that we're going to be installing. Needle valve, the seat, and the bowl gasket. Now, you do need to use the model and type number off the Briggs & Stratton engine that you're, you're actually going to be um, taking the carb off from to make sure you get the correct parts. Don't just assume that these parts are correct. These parts are correct to the model number that I'm going to tell you on the engine. So you want to double check all your stuff, but let's get to it. That issue is, is that the carburetor issue. Needle seat valve is not doing its job and we're going to go ahead and uh, fix that. Now, there is two ways to fix that. You can either replace the carburetor or you can put a new needle valve and seat in this carburetor. This is going to apply to this engine and many others, but you want to check with your model number. And the model number on this engine is a 28M707. So 28N707. I might have said M, but it was, it's an N. And the type is a 01, or it's a 0173-01. You take these two numbers, you're gonna to go to the interwebs, you're gonna go find a parts breakdown for those two numbers, your model and type, and then you're gonna find your carburetor. Now your carburetor is on the other side, and there's two different kind of carburetors most of the time. One is what they call a Nikki, and one's a wall barrel. Now this one here is the wall barrel, and you can tell by the inlet valve, all right? It has a, a plastic inlet valve. The Nikki, I'm pretty sure, has a metal inlet valve. And this is where the fuel goes into the carburetor. So we, you can get different, um, different needle, needle valves and seats. So you gotta make sure you're working on the right one. I'm gonna show you what we have for this. And we're also, we're gonna rebuild the carburetor. We're gonna put the needle valve and seat in there. And then we're also gonna put an inline fuel shut off here. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and, and uh, re replace this fuel filter. So first thing we wanna do is flush this engine. And by flushing this engine, it just means you have to drain everything. Okay, so to make this a little bit easier to work on, right, right now I'm actually going to take off the hood. So I'm just going to disconnect the lights real quick and then we're going to take the hood off. Okay, another sign that gas went everywhere is that all over here is actually the muffler. It's, you must have been running it. The muffler is full of gasoline remnants. You can see it was wet. And that's usually a sign of it running while the uh, carburetor is having an issue. But you want to drain the oil first. And this guy here, this is an older model, and uh, it's a nice little drain right here. I'm not sure. They're all going to be different on different machines. So basically, this is for a Briggs & Stratton single-cylinder engine with the wall barrel carburetor that has the issue. So there's a lot of engines out there that this will, this will work on. 
Now the, the drain plug here is actually still dripping and it is 7 16 square, it's a square plug on here, or you can use a eight point socket and the socket's a little bit easier for me sometimes to you have a little bit leverage, a little better leverage. And this 7 16 wrench will work or let me see what this, this is also a 7 16 eight point socket. And it just, it'll hug this the square a little bit easier. Not too many people are gonna have an eight point socket. You'll probably have a 12 or 16. And then you let it drain out. It's gonna be a complete mess. Now that is coming out so fast. That's actually all gasoline. There's hardly any oil. I've already drained a lot of this. So be, be aware that if you had a full tank of gas, you may need a lot more of a, of a bigger container or you just may need to re put the plug in. Now I would suggest letting this drain while you're working on the carburetor just so you can get every little bit of gasoline out of the engine and you can also like jack the tractor up a little bit so it'll just it'll drain it all into one side down here at the drain and I think I'm probably gonna do that I'm gonna jack it up and let it lean this way so we can drain most of the fuel out of here oh we want all the fuel we want every little bit of fuel we can get out of there Now I'm just going to let it sit on the jack on this side. I just want to make sure that all this gasoline is going to get out, all the gas and the oil will is going to get out of the engine. So I'm just going to let it sit here and drip while we're working on the carburetor. This is a good time to check your fuel line and make sure your fuel line is not dry routed. This fuel line looks pretty good. I'm going to take the air cleaner off. This is the carburetor right here, just so you don't, just so you know. We're going to pull the air filter off. This one is the old fashioned air filter where it has two wing nuts to get the air filter off. And if your air filter, sometimes if you ran it long enough, the air filter actually will get soaked with gasoline. It'll start blowing up through here. So make sure you check it. If it feels real heavy and if it is saturated, this is a, uh, this is actually pretty, pretty wet. So I'm gonna probably just replace this. Uh, it doesn't feel that heavy but it doesn't look, and you can use a flashlight and just shine a flashlight through here to see how dirty it is. Um, if needed, just go ahead and replace it. At this point, we're gonna pinch off the fuel line here, and then we're gonna take off a couple things here. We're gonna take off the fuel line, so let me get my tools ready. Okay, so I have this fuel line clamp right here. I got these from Harbor Freight, and they're just made to pinch off fuel lines. They're plastic, and they won't hurt the fuel line. They're pretty nice. They come in a, a batch of three, and I only really use a small guy because I just do small stuff. So you just basically, Pinch it and then you clip it off with this and then when you're ready to let go of it, you just push it back and open it up and you're good to go. So it's pretty nice. Okay, now this has two different clamps on it, you can see, for the fuel filler. I'm just gonna do this now. Now definitely put something below if you're if you're sit if you're doing this on asphalt, be careful. Gasoline will definitely mess up your asphalt. Um, this is a, a quarter inch right there. Okay, so this is a quarter inch, or you can use a slot head to get this off. I'm probably gonna put on another one of these. I like these hose clamps because you can tighten them where the other hose clamps, they just clamp and they do a good job, but I just like to be able to tighten something with a screwdriver or a wrench. They're a little bit less forgiving. Okay, now this is where my clip removal tool comes in handy. You can just pop this off like that. And like I said, make sure you have something underneath you for fuel coming out. And this will take the fuel filter off. This one's pretty easy to pop off. All right. And now this will come down off of here. Don't lose your other clamps up here. We're gonna have to replace that. Now this has an electronic fuel shut off solenoid right here. So you're gonna unplug it. Just wiggle it and pull it down. Just be careful. Okay, at this point, what we're gonna do is we have a 7 16 wrench that takes these off. I'm gonna put use a socket and then we have a bracket here that's a 5 16 um, socket that'll take that off. I'm actually gonna take it off the top here. I'm gonna loosen it at the engine so it'll just swing out of the way. Now those these screws are definitely different. This is a plastic screw okay and it has different threads so make sure you don't mess up the don't don't take these both out and then put the one in the engine. That's why I just loosen it. I don't take it out. Just loosen it up so this will flip out of the way. 
And then you have a, a nut here and a nut on the inside over there and we gotta get them off. And you also have a 5 16 on top of this one, you have a 5 16 bolt. It's a 5 16 uh, socket that'll take it off. So we'll take this one off first. It's just a nut. The inside. And then we'll switch this to the 5 16 And we'll get the one off the top here, this bolt. Okay. Now this should just slide off. Now it's going to have attached to it the breather tube right here. So you can push this breather tube in and it'll pop out the bottom. Like so, right like that. That just hangs out right there. Now to get the carburetor off the intake here, we're going to use a 5 16 deep socket. And these are studs that you unscrew. Now before I do this, it's easier for me to take off this, this spring, there's a very small spring right here, okay? This is the anti-vibration spring for the governor and anti-surge spring, sorry about that. And you're just gonna pop it up out of this hole and let it down to the side. Be careful you don't bend it. I've bent these so many times just because it's so easy to bend them. And then we'll take this carburetor off. Okay, so we're gonna take these guys out. And your carburetor is now loose. Now, just the choke is right here. This is the choke line. This is the choke bracket lever. Okay, you're gonna, actually, this gasket came off too. They make these gaskets smaller. This one has a heat shield on it. The new ones, some of them did, some of them didn't. You're just gonna pull this around, drop off your choke out of the back here. Remember, it goes in the slot here. This will go. So pop out just like so. And then you have a little U on this bracket here, on that rod right there. You're gonna push this up in the air and then just bring it down off of there just like that. So when you put it back in, it's just like that. Bring it back out like that and put that down. Now this is fully loaded with gasoline because the internal parts were, were uh, failing. Now remember when you take off your choke lever right here, there's three different holes here, it looks like. Just make sure that it goes in the last hole, or actually the first hole. It depends on how you're looking at it. Just make sure you put that back where it came from. You can always look at this video again to find out. And it goes, goes up from the bottom, like so, like this. And then flattens out, and that's your choke, okay? So we're gonna take that lever off, we're gonna let it to the side. Now we're gonna go to the bench, and we're gonna disassemble this. Okay, so this was totally filled with fuel, so much it was overflowing. I already drained most of it out, but tip it upside down, use a lot of rags, wherever you gotta, whatever you gotta do to get all that fuel out, as much as you can get out, just turn it upside down, start shaking. Okay, once you get it emptied as much as you can, then put on my tray here. Anybody wanna go to lunch? I got a lunch tray. Um, right here, it's actually a half inch, and it's very, very hard to get a wrench in here. All right, but it's been, this has been ground down. I've had this forever and it's probably not a half inch anymore. It's probably a little bit bigger than that because I've used it for other stuff and it's widened it up. But a half inch fits right in here and you're just gonna loosen it, loosen up the, this is your electronic fuel shut off solenoid. So you're gonna loosen that up. You're gonna take it off. And all these, all these do is when you turn the key, the ignition on, this pulls this down. It's a magnet inside, it just pulls it down. It allows it to, the fuel to flow. And when you turn the key off, this pushes, <coughs> excuse me, pushes up into the inside here and it stops the fuel from flowing. And it's basically an anti-backfire helper. That's why they made these, is it helps, uh, it helps turn everything off. It doesn't shut the fuel flow from flowing though because it comes through the seat. So this is just, it just helps shut off the fuel when you're shutting down the engine. Okay, so now we have the carburetor and the float is right here. We have a little needle jet valve in here and then we have a jet down inside there. We're not gonna have to move anything. This ran great before it flooded. So I would suggest cleaning off the whole carburetor. If you have compressed air, blow it out. The float, actually the float, the um, bowl came off with the gasket inside it, and I definitely recommend not using them. They usually get pretty 
messed up when they come off. Sometimes you can get away with using them, sometimes you can't. We're gonna put a new one on. Then you're gonna take your float off, which is just a pin, and this is a wall barrel. I'm just gonna confirm it, this is a wall barrel. It says wall barrel right on the side here. So we knew what we had when we were walking into this thing. We knew we had a wall barrel. Okay, you're gonna take the pin out, put it aside, we're gonna need that later. The float should have the needle valve on it. And if you use a magnifying glass, sometimes you can see the imperfections on this. It's like a little neoprene needle in here. And sometimes you can see them. We're gonna replace this. And the hard part right now is getting the seat. This is a brass seat right here. This seat has to come out. And the way I used to do it, before the floods hit at my other shop, um, I used to use a I used to use a tap. I used to tap threads into this and then pull it out with a um, with a slap hammer. Uh, I think I can just try to put a quarter inch bolt in there to see if I can screw a quarter inch bolt. We no longer need this. We will have a new needle, a new seat, which is a new brand a brand new seat. We're gonna push in there. And then we're gonna also have a, the intake gasket, we have a float bowl gasket here, and we also have the new needle valve we're gonna use. Okay, they're all genuine Briggs parts. I'll have that all in the description below as far as if you need them. All right, so we wanna get this out. I'm gonna try screwing in a quarter inch bolt. Okay, sometimes you can just thread the bolt in, and all we need is a couple threads to get started, and then we can just pull it out. So I'm gonna use a nut, nut driver so I can put some pressure on it. And see if I can get this thing to start. If I can get it to start. Now there is a certain, now it's going in crooked, but I don't care. As long as I can get this thing to start, I will be able to yank this thing out of here. Okay, now I'm gonna take it to my vice. As you all know, if you watch my channel, I was born with one hand and the vise is my other hand. You have to be careful whenever you vise something down that you don't break, especially the, the cast. And you gotta make sure that you're not gonna be on the surfaces that you're gonna have mounting surfaces to. Now it's not pretty right now. And if I had my, I might be able to just pull this out. My other mechanic used to be able to pull, pull these things out with just by using a pair of vice grips and pulling them out. I'm gonna try a little different method. I'm gonna to try to tap on it with a hammer. Just so I can pop it out. And there it is. Now I think you can just, if you're, if you're good enough, you can hold the carburetor with one hand and literally just pull the seat out with, the, with, your, with your other hand. And just to show you, it wasn't pretty when it went in, but you don't need to have that. As long as you don't mess up the inner race, which we didn't at all. It didn't go past that point. Um, you, yours, uh, if you find something that fits perfectly, that screws into it, then away you go, there it is, and you'll see it comes out. I'm just taking it all apart, just so I can look down inside there and see there might've been some dirt in there. There's, that's where the Neil valve is gonna sit. We don't take any chances now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use high compressed air. I'm gonna blow out this carburetor and clean it up the best I can and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're nice and clean. Now we're gonna put the new seat. We're gonna, it doesn't, it's a very easy press. And what I mean by press is, we just have to make sure it goes all the way down flush. And the way I do it is I take it over to the vise again. Snug that you won't crack it. That's just me. You guys can do this on a bench. It just now this is a piston stop. It's a plastic piston stop for two cycles. You need something small to go in between this. You don't want to hurt the brass whatsoever. So I'm just going to put the plastic piece right here and I'm going to tap this in until it bottoms out. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So the seat is in. It doesn't take much to, to put this seat in. It doesn't take much to pull that seat out. Then you're gonna come back over. We have a new needle valve in here. Okay, this is our new needle valve. I always just rub my finger around it just to make sure there's no debris or anything on it, which it shouldn't be. Make sure there's nothing sitting on the float. We're gonna put this on the float like so. 
We'll let it sit there for now. We need the bowl gasket, which we're going to do a new bowl gasket, which is this guy here. I like to put the bowl gasket on first because then you don't have to mess around with the float and the needle valve sitting there while you're trying to do this. So you're basically just going to put the, the gasket around the outside edge of the carburetor and it should sit there. There's a recess where we just cleaned it. Just like that. And then you carefully, now with, with two hands it might be a little bit easier, but I've learned that you just have to kind of go all in once here. Just like that. Drop it in. And then you have to line up your rod. Okay, just down a little bit on this. This should easily go through. And then basically I just look to see where the float is sitting. There is no adjustment for that. So you gotta make sure that your seat is down. This should be about level. The float should be sitting about level or a little bit actually up, I guess you call that down this way. But it is exactly where it should be sitting. And like I said, you can't adjust that. Once the, once you press the, the seat in, then you're good to go. And the needle valve just sits on top. Then we have the gasket already on for the bowl. Just make sure your bowl is clean of debris and any kind of anything that's inside that would catch inside that needle valve. If you have a rusty bowl, I would suggest replacing the bowl. You can buy these still. They're not that expensive. This one's in really good shape. So we're gonna put that on here. And then the other gasket, which I don't think I have out right now, it's the gasket that goes right here. This one has a metal washer. Yeah, actually, hmm. Okay, so this metal washer doesn't look like it's gonna be coming off. Okay, so I got a gasket. I don't think it had a gasket on there before, but that is not a gasket on there. It does not come off unless it's been crushed on there, but I have the gasket that goes on there, and I'll make sure I put the, the link to the description below. I'll put the, uh, the gasket part number on there for you. And then you're gonna put the, make sure your bowl is on correctly. I mean, see the right, and you're gonna put your fuel shut off solenoid in there. And you don't wanna, don't wanna just screw these because you can actually break this. It's electronic in here. You don't wanna screw this all the way around. You wanna use your wrench. Snug it up really good. All right, and we are ready to go back on the machine. Okay, so back at the engine here i'm going to try to do this all once now i was gonna i have another gasket for the, the intake here but i really like the one that has a heat shield and it's really not in bad shape at all so i'm going to reuse this it's a very thick gasket i'm going to reuse that one i normally don't like to um, but i am okay so first i'm going to do a reversal here we're going to put the the choke lever on which is up from the bottom just like that that puts the choke lever on Okay, so then after I put the cable, put this lever on, can't talk right today. All right, remember the little U here in the front of the carb? I'm just gonna slip that up in there like that. And this is where we're gonna connect everything together to the intake here. So what I'm gonna do is, and be careful with this spring right here. It's just hanging out. I'm not gonna put that on yet because it's a little bit tricky for me to put it on until after the carburetor's on. So what we're gonna do is get our 5 16 it's quarter inch bolts, but they're five sixteenths to turn them on. I'm gonna put them on in right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna lean it back a little bit just so I can get, I'm gonna put the gasket on the front of it and hang the gasket like on the front of it, this gasket. Now, you gotta make sure you put it in the right way. You want the heat shield towards the motor. Actually, I have it the wrong way. Make sure you put this on the right way as it goes like this. So you want the shield at the motor, like that. And you're gonna slide it on here like this. Slide. Okay, so once I have the gasket on these studs, we have to put the choke lever back in the slot, up in the carburetor bracket right there, up there, right here. You see that? Put that all in there, and everything should flow right into the screw holes here. And try to get one started, a couple threads, and then the other one before the gasket drops. And you just want to make sure the gasket doesn't drop. It takes a little bit of practice to get all this lined up and everything. And I'm not going to tighten this down all the way. What I want to do before I forget is I want to put this little spring, the anti-surge. It helps with the surging. 
It doesn't get rid of the surging if you have a carburetor problem, but it helps. You just want to put that back in its hole, just like so, right like that, okay? And then you're gonna tighten up, make sure your gasket is in correctly. And I'm gonna tighten up the studs here. At this point, make sure your choke is operating correctly because these little plates here are only held in. It's a plastic choke on this. The rod itself is a choke, is, is plastic. And I don't, they just, these flap around a lot. So just make sure that everything is opening and closing like it should. Make sure it's, it's actually spring is working. Some of these springs, they break and then it doesn't operate correctly. So make sure that's all working properly. Okay, I'm gonna take off this clamp because I said I was gonna use a different clamp for this, for the fuel line. So we're gonna take this off. We have a new fuel filter that we're gonna put in line. And wait a minute, we have two clamps we have to put in. We got one here. Okay, so we're gonna put this up on here. And then we have the other one down here. And then we're gonna put the fuel filter in. The other clamps that you just clamp on, they're, they're fine, but I just like to use the hose clamps. And then we're just gonna tighten these up. You don't wanna go too tight, you just want them snug. Make sure they don't leak. Now I did forget the, uh, okay, so the electronic fuel shutoff solenoid now is in a different location than it was. So you have to be careful. I have to remember that this was like so. We just have to make sure that it slides up in there. It should slide up in there pretty fairly easily. To, to know if this is actually operating is you would push in the clutch. And I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna put the brake slash clutch on. And then if you listen for it, Real, it's real quiet. We're gonna just turn the key on. You hear that click? Okay, so that click was showing if the fuel set off sunlight was working properly. So that's how you tell. The clutch break in, turn the key just to on. This should energize itself and you hear a click. Technically, it should be on and off, on and off, and you can hear a click. So um, it clicked and we're working good. All right, so getting back to this, everything, we make sure we tighten up this, make sure everything's operating here, throttle's working. Now we can go ahead and put this on here. Now there is a gasket in here, okay? This is an O-ring. You can see this gasket right here. It's usually orange. This one actually isn't, I'm not gonna take it out. These O-rings last a long time and this, this is fine. All right, so you check your O-ring, make sure you have it. If you need a new one, I actually, I did not get that with the, um, the parts. So if you need a new one, you have to look it up. This one is fine and it just sits over right here. It is pretty important though that it's seating properly because it does, you don't want to have any air sucking through here. Okay, so you slide it on like that. And then you have your quarter inch nuts, 7 16 wrench that'll actually tighten them on. And before I did this, I probably should have put the vent tube back in but i can get my fingers under here and you're basically pushing your tube back up through the air filter this is the breather tube and it should like lock in there there's a little lip on it okay and then we're going to go ahead and tighten up the bolts i'm actually going to put in the screw up here first because before i tighten everything i always like to have everything at least started first Go ahead and tighten these up. And then we have to put the, uh, oops. Okay, so we're gonna have to, <laughs> I thought we were gonna have to take that off, but put your bracket on here. And that's a 516. Do not over tighten that, it's only plastic. Okay, so we got them tight. It's tight there. We're going to do this one here. Okay. If you're going to put a new air filter in, this is the time to put your air filter in. Okay, we're going to, for the video, we're just going to put this on here for now. But I am going to put a new air filter on for the, for the gentleman, and we're just going to put this on. Now, you, I would suggest just putting the tractor down at this point. Instead of doing all that yet, we want to make sure it's set up okay, which means you're going to put it down, you're going to put oil in it. This one does not have an oil filter. Just go by 
the manual for your engine on how much oil and if you do have an oil filter. Now, I let this drip out and I still have a lot of fuel and oil mixture that came out of there. And tighten that up. Now I'm going to use the 7 16 wrench that I had sitting here. Or you can, like I said, you can use the wrench or you can use the uh, 8.716 socket also works. But we do want to take it outside, let it burn all the stuff out of the muffler off. It'll probably take five, five, 10 minutes, bring it back in and then let it sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll come in and we'll see how it sets up. So I'm going to go ahead and put oil in this thing. We're going to go ahead and run it. And then tomorrow morning we'll be back to uh, finish up this video. Okay, so it's the next day and just want to check the oil real quick. We did run it yesterday and I ran it for about 20 minutes. There was a lot of uh, oil remnants and gas remnants in the muffler area. So it did smoke a lot until it burned off. And I'm going to double check the oil here. And the oil is right on the mark. In fact, it looks like I need to add just a little bit. So it did not go up, which is good. The fuel that's in our fuel tank right now is still there. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up just so you guys know. Runs pretty good for a 26 year old machine. Okay, so I just wanted to show you also, uh, I said I was gonna show you, I was gonna put an inline fuel valve in. If you do this job correctly, by putting a needle valve and a seat into this carburetor, it should take care of the problem. You should not need a fuel shutoff. It's just a very nice feature to put in. And this is 26 years old, that carburetor is just as old. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. I'm not gonna show that on video because basically this was how to get this carburetor done. And also what I didn't show you is the choke lever that I made sure that you make sure that it's working. If this is sticking, that's not good. So make sure that your choke is working. And also on the throttle here, when you come up to fast, you have a little indent. Now all tractors are gonna be different, but when it comes up, now if you look over here, I'm gonna show you a little paddle that comes up. When I'm putting the throttle up to fast, it should not be touching the choke, but when you pull it up in the choke position, as you can see, it pushes that lever in right here. And then you just wanna make sure that it's all the way closed, which it is, it's not going any further and it's not loose. If you have to adjust that, that would be down here and you can adjust your cable but this is working perfectly. So that's just a choke thing. So when you get it all back together again, you wanna to make sure that your choke is operating correctly. And it is. So that pretty much sums it up for this video on how to, uh, if you have a problem with gas in your engine, that was the issue with this. And it was because the carburetor actually let loose or the needle valve in the seat did not do its job. That's usually due to dirt contamination inside the carburetor. And I just like to replace the seat after being so old you replace the seat and a needle valve and you do it correctly and then you're good to go for a long time. Putting this inline fuel shutoff is also an extra you know, protection when you get off the machine and you put it away for the week or whatever. You can turn the fuel off and that'll keep any problems with the carburetor to a bare minimum as far as having all the gas go from the tank into your engine. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Tell all your friends about my videos. I do appreciate everybody watching and I will catch you on the next one.